He still can't catch. He still hasn't been able to catch. He's going to be a blocking tight end being that small? Come on, man. I well, just... I, I would imagine he grows into his body. He's going to have to add some weight. And, you know, when you look at his frame, you know, he has a very muscular frame. He can do yeah, that. I, I think he's going to add maybe enough pounds, get like two, mm -hmm. 230 maybe. You yeah. know, and I don't think it's going to affect his, his, his speed or quickness. But I don't see any improvement in his hand. Is he going to yeah. run better routes? Yeah. Is he going to even against linebackers or safeties? Is he going to be able to get open now where he couldn't get open before? I because he, it's not like he was the guy they were keying on anyway. Right. Look, I, I, the other the other thing that jumped at me uh, that I saw last night this morning was: Did you see the news that JJ Ortega Whiteside they're going to try to convert him now? <laughs> oh, no, no, did not say that. In. Did not say that at the beginning of the week. You did. You did. I and said that at the beginning of the week. Here's the thing: Like, uh, it, to an extent, I get it because he's a bigger receiver. Okay, right. and you know, apparently, he's turned himself into a decent blocker. Okay, but. There's also a part of me that says, if you're trying this, is it just time to move on here? Is it time to admit the mistake that you made clearly taking this guy where you – I mean, you think about it. He was the 57th overall pick in the 2019 draft. You want to hear his numbers? Listen to this, Barry. 16 catches, 290 yards, and one mm -hmm. touchdown in three seasons now. Come yeah. on, man. That's a game. That's a game for most receivers. Yeah. For most big name receivers. No, bro. That's no. You, you, I'm not even going to make a comparison to be somebody's game. Or I'm, I'm just going to say, come on, man. It's, it's just you know you got to know when to say when. That's all it is. You got to know when it. Just because he's a tight end does not mean that he's going to be a faster. I mean, a, 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 was he, he's going to be a faster tight end. He still can't catch. He still hasn't been able to catch. He's going to be a blocking tight end being that small. Come on, man. I well, just... I, I, I would imagine he grows into his body. He's going to have to add some weight. And, you know, when you look at his frame, you know, he has a very muscular frame. He can do yeah. that. I, I think he's going to add maybe enough pounds, get like to two, mm -hmm. 230 maybe. You yeah. know, and I don't think it's going to affect his 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 speed or quickness. But I don't see any improvement in his hand. Is he going to he gonna run better routes? Yeah. Is he going to – even against linebackers or safeties, is he going to be able to get open now where he couldn't get open before? I Because he, it's not like he was the guy they were keying on anyway. Right. right. So, Here, right. Here's what I don't I don't understand, going back to something Barrett just said. You have to know when, when it's time to move on. Now, go back. There was a kid named Jaquan Jerry. They, yep. they, they drafted as a safety. Safety, yep. Temple and I remember people in the front office, you know, he played, played for Temple. Mm -hmm. And I remember people in the front, D gun, did you see him hit? Did you see him hit? And I'm, I kept saying, I'm looking at his foot speed. I said, I thought maybe fourth or fifth round. They drafted this kid in like what, the second round? Yeah. And he lasted two seasons <laughs> in Philadelphia. Two. And here we're approaching a fourth season for Umbrella Whiteside. Really? <laughs> Umbrella I, Whiteside. I would yeah. have much more respect. I, I This is where I think organizations get it wrong. I honestly, I do. Look, you're always going to have whiffs. I have much more respect for you if you admit it and move on than compounding it by keeping a guy around like this. And, you know, it's not like you're taking some crazy cap hit if you let him go. Like, it, right, it's just time right. to move on here. And maybe they're looking at it like uh, I, Tyree Jackson, uh, you know, got hurt at the end of the year. He won't be back in the beginning of the season. We need an extra body there. I, I don't know. It, it feels to me like you're trying to still justify that pick. I mean, remember that. Remember when they tried to convert uh, Tim Tebow to a tight end? He he didn't make it out of training camp. Urban you know, Meyer. I, well, yeah. Now, I mean, now granted, you know, Tebow had had moved on to the booth for a few years. Yeah. Uh, to be an a analyst, color analyst, and then try to come back as a tight end. And then you saw a video of him trying to block. Now JJ is supposed to be an accomplished blocker, but if you're playing the tight end position, you got to be able to do more than just block. Now. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on. Nah, yeah. it's. It, it's it's one of those head scratch. Go ahead, back. I, I'm not even going to entertain it. I'm going to let you guys entertain that. I said, I, mean, I said at the beginning of this week, I said maybe they're moving him to the tight end or something because, I mean, he's a bigger type receiver, but it still doesn't. Say, he's a receiver that doesn't catch. He doesn't exactly. catch. Exactly. Exactly. He doesn't catch. I. You're going to pay a guy. You're going to pay a guy for second contract money, who can't catch. It just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I, I gave, I gave the benefit of the doubt. All right, he became a really good blocking wide receiver, but you don't pay wide receivers to block. You don't pay him a contract to block. Right, right, you right. You know what I'm saying? You just don't do it. See, Barrett, yeah. Barrett has to be very guarded about what he says about the organization because he's still 
a part of the, the Eagles organization. So very, if you listen to Barrett, he's very politically correct about what he says about the organization. That's why I can still walk in the locker room. A lot of people yeah. like Joe Salaquito, he can't he can't walk in the locker room anymore. Yeah, but you know what though? Yeah, but you know what, man? You know, and and, and that's I'm glad you brought that name up. I'm so glad. Because what that man went through when he put that article out there, I mean, he had people death threatening him. Okay. Yep. And I sat back and Barrett and you and I talked about this. And we said, and I said, Barrett, he's not too far off from the truth. Oh, no you know? question. And, we talked to the same people. Yes. And he got lambasted. Okay. Yep. People trashed him. Even people in the media on radio and TV trashed yep. his right. article. And, and I said, and I talked to him. I said, Joe, if you believe what you wrote, truly stick to your guns because the truth will come out in the end. And sure enough, when the Eagles and Carson Wentz went their separate ways, all of a sudden these stories start coming out about Carson not being the consummate leader and being a negative instead of a positive yep. in the locker room. And then all of a sudden, the next year, he goes to Indy. And what happens when he leaves Indy? Story okay. came out of Indy about some of the same stuff that supposedly happened in Philadelphia. And so I remember talking to Joe shortly after um, that story came out in Indy, and Joe said, you know what? I just want to thank you and people like Bear because you people stuck behind me when everybody else turned against me. And I said, Joe, it was your story. I wasn't going to add to it. I wasn't going to detract from it. But like I told you when you first came, stand your guns. If you write it, you know, there are a lot of, and I hate to say this, but there are a lot of people in our profession, as you guys know, that do stuff for sensationalism, trying to get notoriety, right. trying to get clicks. Yep. But I knew what Joe was writing, there was some truth behind it because of people I had talked to and That's people I had talked to. Yep. We you knew know? it. We me, me and D Gun and me, we me and D Gun talked about it um amongst each other at the desk. Yes. About who we talked to, how our interaction was with, with, with Carson and yes. others on the team. And I mean everything from Al Sean. We we talked to all these guys. We have a great relationship, dog. Like the reason why you know D Gun had called Derek Barnett and all these guys because we talk to him and chop it up like you know, we're at the uh, we're at the barber shop. So yeah, when yeah. all this stuff was happening, every time something would come out, I look across the you know the desk of D gun like, hey, is it? Yeah. We and knew I would just go. Already. I would just go. <laughs> well, I, I it's funny. I the the day he wrote that, I talked to Joe. He, he we we communicated, and I, I had him on the radio. When he was getting destroyed, okay, destroyed by by like you guys said, everybody, yep. the media, the fans, yes. you know, you name it, right? Everybody's killing him. So I, I put him on because I know Joe to be a reputable guy, to be a guy who, like you said, Derek, isn't just doing this to get yeah. to get clicks, whatever, to try to hot take his way through this thing. And he kept saying to me, "Look, this is real. I'm getting this from legitimate so, and I know the people he got it from, and I know the whatever. Me too, so yeah. they right, were real right. people." As time went on, and you guys are right, like this started to unfold almost in slow motion when it came to Wentz. And it got to the point where there were very established players in that locker room, some of which had to be separated from him, that knew that this guy, you know, it, what the persona that you see in front of the camera isn't necessarily what's going on behind the scenes when it comes to Carson. When your owner, and I, I don't mean Jeffrey Lurie, I mean Jim Irsay last year, when right. your owner talks about you the way that he did – which hurt his trade value. Yeah, he wasn't afraid yeah. to say, we got to get this dude out of here. You yeah. never hear that. You no, never no, hear a coach or an no, organization do it. No. When, when Ursay, and I know he's a bit of a loose cannon, but when Ursay said that, I thought to myself, this guy must be a disaster in the locker room. And Frank Reich's got to be regretting, you know, going to the mat for him. and Putting his name him. out there. Putting his yeah. name behind him, man. You got to watch that. Um, Carson, he, he, he wanted to portray – the holier than thou type of guy. Yeah. And yeah. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm very spiritually based. Even though Derek calls me a heathen, I'm very spiritually based. Everything that I do, you know, there well, is just a purpose. because I saw your head spinning a few times. I mean, what do you expect me to say? <laughs> Projectile <laughs> vomit. Yeah, I won't say anything, but now that you brought it up. Yeah. But, you know, you still, man, you, you, you still have to, you have to, you know, I mean, people understand, you know, Jesus didn't come for, you know, the people I already saved. He came to save centers you know what i'm saying that's what his purpose was to come down and make sure we can secure a relationship with our god with our preach, father preach it brother preach so it. when you're not doing that you're doing the opposite of that instead of instead of bringing in all the 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 
you know, the, the people that's doing bad, all the centers. He was pushing everybody. He was ostracizing everybody. You got to yeah. be able to get along with the people if you're a leader. Whether you, whether you want it or not, you are a quarterback. You're the leader of the team. So you have to be able to, to talk, mix, and be around everybody. Yeah. Not just the offensive players, defensive players, coaching staff, everybody. Or Barrett, Barrett, not just the guys who wanted to, to go to the church group with you. It, it, there, exactly. there are other guys. And, and, exactly. You know, and, and that's a huge piece of this thing is yep. locker room presence. I'll tell you the other thing. Stubborn as hell, man. Yes, you know, yes, coaches yes. and teammates trying to help you, give you suggestion, constructive criticism, whatever. You got to be able to take that stuff in and listen to it, incorporate your game. Not, you yeah, yeah, all right, I got this, and and yeah. Parsons and I got this guy. And guess what? You're not as athletic as you were, dude. So you right. don't have it like you used to. <laughs> right. You you used to be right. able to be Houdini in the middle of a pile and get out of it. You can't do it anymore because of the injuries and because you you're getting be older. Exactly, you got to be able to listen to people. Like, I mean, like. I always listen. You know what I'm saying? I always take everything in. What? I, I, what? Bro, you know I always <laughs> what? listen. What? Come on now, man. Come on now. Okay, I'll give you that. All right. How all right. many times have I, you know, I, you, you, he'll say one thing. He don't say it over one time. He'll say one thing. Hey, man, maybe uh, maybe you need to come in a little earlier and look over your notes and stuff. He just put it out there like that. I'm like, Rob, that's how we were trained, bro. That's it. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you got to prepare, man. That's, it, man. So, that's what it's all about. So what did I start doing? You started coming in earlier. Right. You know, you put you put the socket wrenches down when you were out there building your cars and stuff. And you came in earlier, man. Did your homework. You got to slow down when you're reading a prompter. Yep. 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 Slow down doing yep. that. I mean, certain things that you have to listen to. All right, you're running the read option. You got to hold it a little longer and wait till that end commits. Yes. Before you pull it, Carson. Pull it. Hey. I'm taking it myself. Even, yeah. even the most simple thing, like live to see another day, man. Uh, right. Throw it away. Just throw it away. It's all right. We can live with a punt. We can live with it with a third and seven. And it, but it everything is it's it's like it's the last play of the game with no time left with him every single time. Hey, when that story came out about Carson almost getting in a fight in the locker room with Darren Sproles, I would have paid money to see that. Can you, you imagine don't. that Carson is six five six six? Darren Sproles is five six, soaking wet. Can you imagine that? Yeah, on a step ladder. But I, I'll take Darren. I would have taken Darren Sproles all day. By the way, at that one, he'd have beat, the, he'd beat the cotton out of his mouth, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I would have too. He'd yeah. have got up on that step ladder and wailed away at his uh, waist. Exactly. Whoop, 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 Jump whoop. off that trampoline and land a couple you know of saying? shots right after. Yeah. No, there's no doubt. And look, that's the thing. And, and I think we were all fooled initially, right? And, yes, and, yes, and, yes. and it's taken nothing away from. The, the season that he had in 17, he was phenomenal until right. he got hurt. It's a shame. They don't win a Super Bowl without him. I, I firmly believe that because the home field advantage, et cetera. He, he did an amazing job, but something changed, man. And, you know, I don't think he was ever the same physically. And and the other stuff just started to kind of grow. And I think he got a big head with the contract. I think maybe, the by, by the way, the organization kissed his rear end. I think all those kind of things played into it. And, you know, it got to the point where they had to, Think about the dead cap hit that they had to take just to unload them. Ooh. Same thing with the Colts that are, are going through right now. Like they, Washington's such a disaster of an organization. They think they're going to transform this guy. They're not. They're not. It's going to be that you're going to see flashes every once in a while, but it, it's ultimately, I don't think he can get out of his own way, man. He tried, they tried to do it with um, that linebacker from, from Alabama who got in trouble. He got drafted in the first round. Yeah. Uh, Ferrari, they call it Ferrari, whatever his name is. Was it Foster? Uh, yeah, Ruben Foster. Ruben Foster. Ruben Foster. And, I, yeah. and I wanted Ruben Foster. I wanted the Eagles to pick him up in the He first was a great round. player. Yeah, he man. Great, great college player. Great talent. Great player. But he just couldn't get out of his own way. I heard he had a workout with Miami. But I don't think they have the same support system that the Eagles. Eagles can bring in wayward guys like that. They can come in because they have the foundation to work through those type of ordeals with people that have a checkered past. Like, they could bring in a Michael Vick. They could bring in guys that, you know, didn't necessarily – um, have their best resume, like a Garrett Blunt, um, and on a team situation. You know, in team situations, they have the you know they have that fundamental foundation that they could do it. Washington doesn't have that fundamental no. foundation. They've got a lunatic running the organization. You know what I'm saying? And a bunch of yes men and yeah. women surrounding, like everybody. Ah, da, da. Yes, Mr. Snyder. Yes. Yeah. Ah, da, da. Yep. So they, I mean, he might not be the owner in the next couple of years. You know, anyways. If this stuff, not to get too far in the weeds with this, but yeah. if this stuff comes out that he, that they, you know, didn't report some of the finances, that's what will get them out. 
all the yeah. moral stuff. The, the, yep. the, the, we know the NFL looks the other way because they're hypocrites. But they'll look the right. other way on that stuff. But when know. it comes to their pocketbook, forget it, man. <laughs> if that's the case, yep. that's going to get him out of there. You That'll know what I'm saying? It. <laughs> that's you crazy. know how it is, man. That's, that's crazy that you're, you're right. You're, you're right on point with that because you know you can do everything you want to do. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do unless you mess with the money. When you mess with the money, oh no, we got to get him out of here. Yep. Yeah. How, here. how much more? How much more can that organization endure? They've they've gone through the sexual harassment scandals. They've gone through the scandal of allegedly uh, photographers being told to take pictures of uh, cheerleaders when they were on. Uh, on location to take photo shoots uh, for the team calendar and things like that. Um, they changed the complexion. They got rid of the so-called cheerleading squad. Um, they have uh, more women in power in the front office now trying to rectify some of the mis misgivings they've had in the past. And now this. How much more embarrassment can the Daniel Snyder endure? Oh, He's yeah. got one of the worst franchises in the league, by far from a media standpoint, the worst stadium in the NFL. And I know they're talking about building a new stadium down in Arlington, Texas, but I mean, Arlington, uh, Virginia. But how much more can this man, how much more embarrassment can this man endure? They don't right. draw just, well, yeah. too. They no, don't they don't. But no. You, you, forget the, you forget the part that they got another team's head coach fired. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, Gruden. <laughs> they got another coach's head coach fired over emails that he had with their head coach, who was their brother. Yeah, I, I look. I keep getting back to if this, if they, can, if there's a, 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 you know, a trail to this thing, if there's a smoking gun with the money, that'll that'll finally force Goodell's hand. Goodell covers everything up. He, you know, none of this stuff got public other than Gruden. You think that's a coincidence? None of the oh. Washington stuff came out. They, they were angry at Gruden, not to get into the whole Gruden thing here, but they were angry right. at Gruden from some of the stuff that he did, and he got his. Look, yep. you know, whatever. But that tells, that tells you're telling you me nothing came out on Washington yeah. from this thing? Publicly? What do they have, like over 65,000 emails, emails they went through? And yep. that's the only one that slipped through the cracks publicly? Right. Yeah. right. I mean, it's, really? It's the same thing. Like he, we, we could sit here, and I don't want to sound like some crying Eagles fan, but he, he covered up for the Patriots back in the day. I mean, there's no doubt he squashed that stuff. So – this stuff happens a lot, unfortunately, with, with the league. It's such a money maker, and the owners love that Goodell just keeps lining their pockets, man. And Goodell's making what's he making? Forty something million a year. So that's like that gravy train doesn't want to be stopped. He no, doesn't no, want to be stopped. It's more than forty. It's more than forty. Plus, everybody's family gets lifetime health care, and yes. we don't and have a private care. jet. And a private jet. You yeah. What, private how's jet? it work for for a player, Barrett? Like for a guy who played as long as you do, how long? What do you get? It like. They give you a few years when you retire. When you retire, you get five years from the from the last time you um you get a check. You get five years. After that five years, you mm -hmm. no longer get any medical. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. They do have a fund where if you if you uh it'll it'll reimburse you. Like if I go out and I might have a surgery, if I have a surgery so, and it costs me fifty grand, right? I have to pay the fifty grand first before I can get reimbursed for it. So you pay it out of pocket and then they cover you. Right, right, right. Okay. But that see, some players are messing that up. Yeah. Because guy, you know, Clinton Portis is going to jail for that now. Right. He went out and bought one of those uh, hyperbaric chambers, and he had somebody make him a receipt for it. A doctor making a receipt for it, sent it in, got reimbursed the money, but never got the hyperbaric chamber. No kidding. So they messed up because all the receipts were like, you know, sit receipts they got off. You know, uh, any site, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And got reimbursed for it. So they I mean it. I'm talking about like a lot of money, like several uh, hundred thousand dollars worth of um, stuff that they were supposed they got reimbursed with and didn't didn't have a, you know, the the machines to do it. Crazy. Hey, you know who else was a part of that? Uh, and I, and it just blows me away because he's such a good guy. Remember Corel Buckalter? That's right. Yeah, Buckalter's Correll, one yeah. of the guys. Yeah, man. Um, who also got caught up in that? And Corel is the most down to earth, nicest human being you ever wanted to meet in your life and so when his name surfaced I, it just it left me speechless man that he he was a part of that as well i'm like wow amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's like what six seven x players that were yeah, involved yeah. in this and yeah, I, all i did man i, I got the reimbursement. I, I was like man should i get this reimbursement for me, them putting in a molar or or, or something you know what i'm saying i'm, I'm yeah. thinking like i don't want to mess with it at first but i'm like man you know what that's my money i'm gonna go ahead and yeah. so now i send it in you know, anything Good. I pay now as far as medical, I send it in so I can get reimbursed for it. But those guys were getting over like a fat rat, man, having yeah. bogus receipts. 
and them sending the money for it, man. Hey, Rob, I, I, Rob, I just checked. Roger Goodell made $63.9 million last year, which included oh bonuses uh, and stuff like that. Lar thanks in large part to the $100 billion 10-year contract uh, agreement they signed with the players. So, man, it, dude, let me tell you, 63.9. So if a commissioner of a league is making almost $64 million a year and he gets private jet and he gets health care benefits for the rest of his life, it, it just plays to what I've been saying for years, that the NFL is the richest, mo most lucrative sports conglomerate on the planet. Yeah, if Bar you're not no. if you are not making insane money as an owner, you're doing it. It's almost foolproof. It, it, it really is at this point. All right, let, let's keep I, you know let's keep rolling with the uh, with the football talk, guys. When we get back, because I want I want to dive into the uh, into the draft. I want to get into two areas I think are major. I, I'm looking at the depth chart at corner and safety. And we touched on this a little bit earlier in the week, but let's get into some of the some of the corner and safety options uh, coming out in the draft. We'll do that one o'clock by the way, in the one o'clock hour. Uh, we're going to be joined by, joined by James Palmer. James does a phenomenal job as a reporter for the NFL Network. He's also Scott Palmer's son. Scott Palmer, a legend in this town, a long time at Channel 6, working oh, with yeah. Phillies now. Yep. For, for the, I'm, I'm sorry, guy, but I, I just got to say this one more thing about this, what we just got to talk about. <laughs> Bro, it wasn't until 2016 that the NFL paid taxes for the money they were making. Jeez. They were a tax exempt. Um, Entity, what? Seventy three years. How's that possible, <laughs> bro? I, I, I thought I heard they were a, um, a not for profit, Jeez. but they're pro, they're for profit. But you know they oh yeah, they, they got so many loophole. But can you believe that? No, and that's one no. thing. I, one thing I know, I'm gonna die and I'm gonna pay taxes. And that's the NFL it. Let me pay a tax. Bro. There's two absolutes, man, for our lives, <laughs> right? And, and, and it's those two things. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not the NFL. That's for sure. That all right. Crazy. Yeah. Let's well, get a quick ahead, time out. Well, no, it's all right. We'll come back. We'll keep rolling with the football talk, man. This is fun. I, I, I like to dive a little bit more into the draft. Like I said, James is coming up uh, a little after one o'clock from the NFL Network. So we'll talk to James. He's covering the Eagles all week next week. So he'll be he'll be firmly in Scott's and even he's been really, you know, dialed in on the Eagles and what they may end up doing. So I want to get into that with James. We'll do the sixers a little bit later. They're looking to take get the broom out, do some chores on Saturday, take care of business against the Raptors. Billy's back at it. We do have a lot more in store, that's for sure. He's D Gun. He's Barrett Brooks. I'm Rob Ellis. You're watching Sports Take, Jacob Media, YouTube Network. And let me tell you.